friends. Welcome to another episode of the 10 Laws Podcast with East Forest. I am said Mr. Forest of the East. Thank you for listening. Thanks for coming back to another episode and for subscribing and for being a part of our community. A special thank you to everyone who's part of the East Forest Council on Patreon. That is a way to support this podcast if you'd like to do so. Uh, check it out, eastforest.org, and scroll down on the homepage there and you'll see more. This week, I wanted to uh, do a little solo cast because I thought it'd be the best way to give you some really amazing stories and history and behind the scenes of this this new track and video that came out this week of the Sit Around the Fire song with John Hopkins and Ram Dass and myself. Uh, this track, uh, Sit Around the Fire, is the first single off what will be John Hopkins' new album that's called Music for Psychedelic Therapy. That's right. His new record is called Music for Psychedelic Therapy. How amazing is that? Which comes out later in the fall. And this is the first track. And this, there's kind of an interesting history to how this came about, why we selected this particular talk, talk from Ram Dass. And I, I want to share with you some samples and clips that uh, you won't hear anywhere else about how this track came to be. I did do a podcast with John, John Hopkins, where I get to ask him all sorts of amazing, wonderful questions about the creation of this track and the album. Uh, that will air uh, a little later from now, so stay tuned for that on the podcast. And yeah, just a heads up on that. So you will hear from John directly. I just wanted to give you... Uh, sort of my angle of it and things we weren't able to touch on when he and I talked. But before we do that, I just want to say thank you for giving a review and thank you for supporting the podcast and everything East Forest. But but don't fast forward yet. I want to let you know that we have added a new date in the live world in Austin, Texas on September 21st and John's going to be there. So it's me and John Hopkins. This is an incredibly special event for me. Uh, Austin, Texas, September 21st at Fair Market. Uh, tickets are now on sale, eastforest.org slash tour. You can learn more about it. But this is being hosted by Aubrey Marcus. It was his idea. Thank you, Aubrey. And it's going to be an East Forest ceremony concert, so you can lie down on the ground in that mandala fashion and go super deep together. And then right after that, we're going to have an immersive listening experience of John's entire new album music for psychedelic therapy which is just over an hour so it's going to be a deep dive and a premiere of that and for me to celebrate um, a new album for myself that's called in a soundtrack for the psychedelic practitioner uh, we're releasing a single for that on september 8th so this is a lot of psychedelic therapy music and i know it sounds like that was planned or you know it, it does, but it wasn't at all. And that's what's so incredible about all this. But just to let you know, September 21st, Austin, check it out, eastforce.org. And we, we also have the dates, uh, the 14th of September, just before that, will be in Denver. And the 16th of September in Salt Lake City. Those are also ceremony concerts. And then after Austin, the weekend after, on September 25th, I'll be performing at the Tree Fort Fest in Boise, Idaho, and Yoga Fort. Uh, I believe that same day. Uh, so lots of amazing things. And then we're heading over to the East Forest Retreat after that, which is sold out. Uh, but, but one more announcement. We did just get Esalen in Big Sur, California. That has now been rescheduled. That will be November 12th through 15th. So it's kind of cool. It's like a Friday through a Monday. So it's a little longer. So it'll give us more time to chill out and soak in the hot springs there. So you can see if that's um, if that's something you'd like to attend, if you're looking for a, a retreat, that's also at eastforce.org. Just hit the retreat tab. All right. Um, that's enough of, of the business. I just really want to let you know about those live events because I'm gearing up for them, doing lots of rehearsal, and it's been a long time since I've been out on the road in this way. And as you know, you know, Salt Lake date, we had to reschedule three times because of the venue being taken over by the county. So now we're at a new venue in Salt Lake City on the 16th. Um, but the Denver, Salt Lake, Austin, Boise, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see you on the road. And thank you so much for that support out there. So the story of how Sit Around the Fire came to be is 
is it's an interesting winding one. You know, it started with uh, Raghu Marcus, who you probably know as the executive director of the Love Server member Ramdas Foundation. You know, after the Ramdas album came out, he had asked me to do another track that was something with Ramdas in his back in the heyday. You know, like old Ramdas, the tapes, and you know something Raghu asked me to do originally for the Ramdas album, and I, I was the one who said. No, I'd really rather go see him in person and and record him today, which I know is a big ask. And if you're if you're a listener to this podcast, you've heard my stories about recording Ram Dass and how I just want to look him in the eyes and be like, hey, you know, I, I'm putting your your words to music. I think I should meet you and just let you know that this is happening, kind of soul to soul, looking in the eye. And thankfully, Raghu agreed to that, and I did that. And but what was so great about recording him? you know, back in 2018, that summer for the Rob Doss album was that he got to sort of choose what he wanted to speak about for the most part. I gave him prompts, but he was, he was speaking from his place of wisdom of his entire life. And I loved capturing the the beauty of his, his age and wisdom in his voice and really using like a nice condenser mic, uh, and, and really just letting him be who he is and in in all of his truth and, and glory. So that, I thought that was a huge asset, and I, I still think so today. It's kind of and sort of honoring our elders too, um, sonically. But anyway, a, another practical reason I didn't want to use older stuff is there's, I think there's like fifteen thousand hours of Ramdas talks, and I just didn't know where to start. There's so many good ones I'd heard a lot of them, but it just felt like not only is that a huge task to sift through that kind of stuff, it just also felt stressful to kind of decide what to sample. I. I've always, for the, for all the songs up until this one, I've only used recordings that I've gathered myself, whether it be that a cricket, a frog, or someone talking. And that felt like it's what came to me. It's the colors that I'm allowed to paint with is what has come across my life. So this was a new task for me. Uh, in that way, I, I guess I kind of cheated because I started by asking Nathan, who works at the foundation, who's familiar with a lot of their archive. I told him what I was kind of looking for and helped him like kind of give me stuff. That way it wasn't just me out there finding it. And I told him that I wanted something that at first we were looking for something that spoke to the psilocybin, the psychedelic movement, because that felt really important and or timely too. And it is still. And we started with a different track and uh, I prepared that and I sent it to an, a different artist, actually, that uh, I was talk, talking to, uh, I guess I can say, I was talking, sort of talking to Diplo uh, through an intermediator, Rada, <laughs> who knows him. But I sent him the stuff, and it just never really went anywhere. And I trusted that process, too. And later on, I was like, I'm not sure this is the right talk anyway. Uh, I, I want something that's more, like, universal and just speaks to everyone and is open-hearted and, above all, is hopeful. It's not just intellectual, but it really engenders a feeling of, of hope and speaks to this time of transition that we're in. So we sent a few different talks over the months, and I was waiting till I found something. And uh, at one point, he sent over this talk from 1975 from Massachusetts at a Unitarian church. And it was, I think, about two hours. And I was listening to it, and at, at first listen, you know, it was really overtly religious. Like he was, you know, I think Ram Dass, like anyone, was meeting the crowd that he was at and perhaps it was a religious crowd. And so he's, he was using a lot of uh, examples and metaphor of religious figures, Christian and, and otherwise. And so it had a very heavy religious tone, but I noticed that around that, it also had these beautiful uh, universal messages that th- it was more the feeling that Ram Dass was uh, embodying in his voice and just his energy was really calm and loving and tapped in. And that's what drew me in. So I thought it would be worth it to try making an edit of this to say, well, you know, how do I take two hours? Are there some samples in here, some phrases that could be interesting to, to, to call down to like maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So I tried doing that. And I kept whittling it down. And this is an interesting experience for me, too, because I'm, I'm editing Ram Dass, which is something I didn't want to do much on the Ram Dass record. You know, on that record, he it's mostly just what he wanted to say. I mean, I, I had to do some editing, but it's pretty slight. 
as far as choosing what he said. I, I, I took great strength not to rearrange what he said and so forth because I wanted to trust him, you know, obviously. And someone at the apex of a lifetime of speaking and their own knowledge. So, But in this case, I had to because it was so long. And so now you're asking, before I play that, how does this relate to John Hopkins? It didn't yet. Um, and John is someone that I've been a fan of for many, many years. Like he is someone I've looked up to as a musician and I did not know him. I did not have any introduction to him. I didn't know how to know him. And, uh, the way I got to know him is a very interesting story. And then I'm going to tell you how I presented this to him and how it became the song that you uh, can now hear in the video too. But first, let's take a second to listen to a bit of the original talk from Rome, Massachusetts, when Ram Dass in 1970 speak, 1975 was speaking at a Unitarian church. You get a sense of the, the vibe in its raw form. The real work you have to do is in the privacy of your own heart. All of the external forms are lovely. But the real work is your inner connection. First with your playmate, Beyond that with God and actually with your own self. It's really time for you to see through the absurdity of your own predicament. You aren't who you thought you were. You just aren't that person. And in this very lifetime, you can know it. Right now. Every miracle that occurred in the Bible is occurring on this earth at this moment. I am living in a world of miracles. And they're all just the stuff of it all. Nothing of living truth has been lost. It's all right here. not for later, it's for now. Right now. If you feel a veil away from it, if you feel closed from it, just quiet your mind. Open your heart. Quiet the mind, open the heart. How do you quiet the mind? You meditate. How do you open the heart? You start to love that which you can love and just keep expanding it. You love a tree, you love a river, you love a leaf, you love a flower, you love a cat, you love a human. But go deeper and deeper into that love. Until you love that which is the source of the light behind all of it. Behind all of it. So as you can hear, you know, he's just really tapped in. And this was a long talk. And as I said, I broke it down into like a 10 or 15 minute uh, edit, essentially. And I had that. And so now I'm thinking like, well, this is this is pretty special. But I think it'd be great to bring another artist on board. And I had recently been introduced to John. Now, how that happened was on Instagram, of all places, I had met Anna, DJ Anna, who I've done some really wonderful collaborations, the Voyager song, and we've actually continued, <clears throat> excuse me, to do some more collaborations that are still in the works that I think are this, the bee's knees. I really love like when she brings her production and I get to do vocals and piano. But anyway, we met on Instagram, which is rare to me because Miranda helps me with my social media and I, I don't see a lot of those messages typically. And so... 
kind of the fact that I saw Anna's and we even got to meet that way and it turned into something real was sort of incredible. And Anna's just really sweet and just a really wonderful, giving, genuine person. And she had mentioned to me uh, when we were uh, messaging about doing something together, she's like, yeah, you know, I did a, I, I noticed she had done a remix for John Hopkins. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. You know, that I'm a fan of John. And she says, oh, well, I can introduce, you know, John, John would like to talk to you. And I'm like, what do you mean John would like to talk to me? John knows my music? She's like, yeah. And that, that alone kind of floored me. And I didn't think much would come of it, but eventually she did introduce us on email. And John said, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's chat. Let's have, let's get to know each other. So we did a Zoom, which was crazy for me. And I was here in, in Boulder, Utah, where I am right now, which is not great internet at all. The internet craps out all the time. And we did a Zoom and I'm just hoping it would hold. And there was no agenda other than saying hi. And we basically hung out. It was his evening, my morning. He's over there in London. And I don't know, an hour or so went by, but it's just kind of like rapping about music and life. And this is in the pandemic, deep in the pandemic in 2020. And we were just talking about like, I th- we talk about this in the podcast together that's going to come out later, where he was just saying how he was, like a lot of us, just really slowing down and wanting to make some music that spoke to that feeling in that time and not be doing the very heavy Uh, beats and techno production that he also does sometimes which I can vibe out with so we're kind of on that similar wavelength and uh, our meeting ended I think he followed up and said yo let's I'm sorry it ended abruptly or something let's do it again okay awesome so we met again and we talked a few times and we kind of got to know each other a little bit and I had this this Ramdas thing in my back pocket and I was wanting to present it to him, but I, I was naturally nervous. But eventually I just thought, why not? Let's just present the idea. And so I, I sent him the talk, an edited version. So I put together like sort of like a highlights reel of what I thought could be useful in the song. And I said, you know, love server member would love to do another track. I th- I'd love to have your voice on this in any way you'd like. And no timeline, deadline, basically however you'd want to approach this. If you want to be involved, we'd love to work with you in in any fashion. And he wrote back and said, hey, I'm heading to Scotland. Let me take the week while I'm away. I'll listen to this and marinate with it and get back to you. It's like, you got it. No problem. So he gets back and he's like, yeah, I listened to this. It's really a beautiful uh, energy and message of his. Um, I'd I'd love to do this. Let's, Let's do it. So... Now it's on. I'm super excited. And I'm just like, well, how do you want to do it? I'll do it however you want to do it. And John said, why don't you start a track? That's I like working that way. And then I'll do the next step. So basically you start it. (laughs) I was like, you got it. No problem. But of course, when we hung up, uh, I was nervous because how do you know the worst thing you can do when you're making any music is to try and write something really good or has a particular agenda. And of course, I wanted it to be good. I wanted it to be amazing, but I also knew knew it's important to just like throw spaghetti against the wall and see what kind of sound sticks. It's it really just, we truly need to just start making noise, so to speak, and let it unfold. So I just sat down at the piano and started putting together a track with this sample I had. And I knew it wasn't going to be like in finished form, but man, it was a meditation exercise in itself just to be like, don't think about it too much. Just keep making noise. Just keep making noise. And after like a few days, I had I had a track. And I, I originally was like, oh, I could make a whole bunch of tracks and pick the best one. But something in me told me, no, just do what comes out. Don't judge it and and just work with it. So briefly, I'll just show you a little bit the process of the original song and stems that I came up with for John. Originally, it just started with a piano track. And from there, I had just bought a marimba on Craigslist, which I was looking for a vibraphone, but I found a marimba, so I thought I'd put a little bit of that into the track. After I had uh, the piano and the marimba in there, I wanted a vocal pad, something to kind of serve as a a sonic bass, a glue throughout the rest of the song, so different vocalizations.
Yeah, and from there, uh, I put in, you know, bass and a little bit of a field recording of a clock. And I think that, and of course, Ram Dass. So I think what I'll do now is I'm going to play the, the song as it was in version one. And we'll just give a listen to, like, basically where things there. started. There. Now. Then. time for you to see through the absurdity of your own predicament. You aren't who you thought you were. You just aren't that person. So I'm going to just fade it out there for now, but it was a whole song and that's basically what it sounded like. So I sent that off to John and, um, just kind of hoping like, well, I hope, hope he is okay with this. I hope this is what he's looking for. But I sent it, I sent it to him as stems, of course, so he could, you know, do his, do his thing. Basically, I think a few weeks went by or something. And then eventually I remember, uh, we were communicating on WhatsApp and I got this, message from him and he's just and I think it said something like very 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 good day in the studio today <laughs> which is exactly what you want to hear and he later tells me that you know he he went into the studio and uh starts stripping this down and and beforehand he asked me he's like are you okay if I uh you know only use parts of this or strip it down and I was like absolutely like put this thing through the John Hopkins sound machine. Just do your thing. You can use none of it. You can use all of it, whatever. Free pass. He's like, great. So I think he basically took the vocal and put a bunch of reverb on it and made that, like, as he put it, uh, a choir across the oceans. And I bet he stripped away everything else. And he took the Ramdas sample and kind of broke it up so he could he could 
take some parts out. He added a couple little parts in from my original like 10, 15 minute edit. And it was more of just like one through line, like a little mini talk. And, and then he says he just sat down to that and just did an improvisation of piano of his own against that, which is a new chordal structure. And that's what you hear on the song. And he's like, it was the first take. So he talks a lot about that in the podcast we did together. So I'll save his process for that talk. But essentially, it all just came together almost spontaneously. And he got a mix together a few days later, or a week later, and he sent it to me. And it's, you know, 95% what you hear now in the finished release version of Sit Around the Fire. And I was so blown away. You know, I heard, I remember him sending it to me and I was, I was in the studio and I heard my vocal like back there in the distance, like a, like a choir across an ocean, but like you have to reach for it almost. And the sub frequencies, if you have a good system, you can hear in the background, there's this pad of just sub frequencies that are just amazing, which I think are like sounds of London mixed with like reverbs that are dropped in octaves. You know, this, he's this wonderful technique of making atmosphere and textures. And it just created this incredible sense of space and, and, and depth. And above all, I, I heard this track and it just, in Rada too, we were listening to it. We we're just like, holy shit, this is, this is amazing. Like so beautiful. Like when the piano hit, I was just like, yes, yes. You know, he, he took it further and deeper as, as of course I knew he would, but like right to the emotional center that I was hoping, you know, someone like he can, he can do. Um, so let's listen to just a little bit of the song, you know, at the beginning when that hits and I'll, I'll talk about where it unfolded from there. you can love and just keep expanding it. You love a tree, you love a river, you love... Oh, man. I mean, every time I hear it, it just rips at my heartstrings and brings tears to my eyes. It's something amazing about the culmination of the elements in this track, about how they can engender a feeling. It's like I Am Loving Awareness, that song. It also... He's talking about an idea, but it's actually bringing up that feeling, that idea of loving was awareness within you. It's, there's an upswelling where you get to experience what it is through the song. This song is like that too. Like he's the music and the culmination of his words and the music is is bringing forth the idea that he's he's saying. And so I, I had this track, and I was just like blown away with it. And we were both really into it, and that was kind of where it, it sat. And as the weeks and months went by, I was doing the ketamine sessions at Rada's Ketamine Clinic, and I had chances to experience this song in medicine states, and it just took it to a whole other level because on its own, like listening to it in a sober mind, it's, it's very deep and powerful and opens up a lot of emotion. But inside the medicine space, it was really like Ram Dass was not just speaking to that space, but he like became that space the oneness energy, the wisdom of all that is. And it's difficult to describe, but just to say, it really hit me hard. And I, I remember texting John after one of those experiences, and I said, you know, man, this track that you made is going to save a life. I know it. I mean, probably many lives, but there's going to be somebody out there who's on the edge, and they're going to hear this, and it's going to bring them back to keep going, to take another step, to stay in their journey. And that alone is so honorable. 
let alone like whoever else, all the other experiences. I mean, just for myself, I was having such profound experiences with this. So, you know, John eventually came to me and said that he was kind of continuing on this vibe. And he's like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of making a whole record that I'd like to include this song on. And is that okay with you? And I'm like, are you kidding me? Of course that's okay with me. That's amazing. What an honor. So he ends up making an entire record where this is on that record and that's music for psychedelic therapy. And which is, which is even more amazing. Cause like, you know, I, I'm in that world, as you know, and I have been working, I was working through the pandemic on this upcoming album in a soundtrack for the psychedelic practitioner volume two. It's basically a follow up to music for mushrooms, uh, a two hour experience to guide the psychedelic journey. And then John's like picking up on that wavelength on his own, of course. And it's just like, we're both riding this, this wave that's going on and just like surfing it as musicians and, and seeing what comes out of us. So for him to do that was just like this incredible synchronicity for me. And then on top of that, it's the 50th anniversary of the Be Here Now book, which is awesome. So, you know, Raghu and Love Serve Remember, Raghu is super into the track too. He's like, oh my God, this is like exactly what I've always wanted to embody with Ram Dass's words and music, like the feeling that it evokes. So it's a big love fest, love fest and everybody's really happy about it. And essentially, uh, Domino Records is John's label that was putting this out. So we had to wait a while as they do their thing until, just, you know, uh, last week, September 2nd, 2021, when this single came out. And they also released it with that amazing... Did you, have you guys seen the video for this? I mean, holy shiz. It's like, uh, there's a, a creative firm called Yes Please, and they did an animation of the pages of the Be Here Now book and turn that into a video for this album. That is also one of an incredible, stunning work of art. I highly encourage you, uh, of course, to listen to the song if you haven't, but if you want a visual element, um, it's on my website. I'm linking to it on YouTube. So eastforest.org, and, and you can see this video for Sit Around the Fire. It's just stunning. When the golden rings start emanating out with the piano lines, I mean, be still my heart. Woo! Let me tell you, that is some good stuff. So that's the basic story of how this con this song came to be from like coming out of the Ram Dass record to uh, looking for a talk, having a talk through Nathan come our way, curating that talk, somehow making our way from Diplo to, <laughs> to John Hopkins through Anna, bless her heart, through Instagram through uh, a demo that I make that Don, that John then just takes to um, another level of musicality to you, to your ears, to your heart, and to hopefully for generations to come as another musical tool to help us open up and walk through our days. You know, the, the thing that um, I appreciated a lot from John is I, you know, I see him as a mentor, whether he knows that or not. Uh, he is. He's someone I really look up to as both a person, but as a musician and producer. And he, I, I so so humbled and honored to see this process from the inside out and watch how he could take something that I was working on and bring such craft and care to it to take it to this. Uh, I don't know how to say it other than like another level and uh, uh, another octave of uh, maturity. And it really taught me something about where my own music can go and what I can do and the patience I can bring to the creation process and how far I can dream and the, and the depths that I can continue to mine as a musician. He kind of showed me, he actually showed me by taking like my own voice and putting it into this song in a way, in ways I hadn't dreamed of before or thought of before or heard before. And in that way, he actually gave me such a gift to let me dream bigger and to show me where things can go. And for that, John, I thank you. And I really hope I have the honor to continue working with you and having your, your counsel and input on my own music and anything for yours is an open door of course I'd always want to support your work, but thank you. And thank you to the love serve remember foundation for allowing us to do this. And most of all, thank you to all of you 
for uh, embracing it and sharing it and listening. I really feel this is a beautiful gift uh, for the world right now. And there will be someone out there who really needs this in this moment. So thank you for for doing your part and sharing it. And for Domino Records for uh, doing such an amazing job to get it out there in the press. I mean, the day it came out, I mean, Pitchfork wrote about it and Spin and uh, Brooklyn Vegan and Consequence of Sound and all these. So thank you to all the writers out there who are supporting this kind of work and not belittling it and saying, oh, it's new age or it's yoga music or, you know, belittling it by putting it in a category as opposed to just saying, it's great music. It makes me feel something like all music does, you know, and that's what it's all about is having an open mind and open heart and allowing ourselves to, to feel the depths of feelings that we all feel. These are human feelings and human emotions. So thank you. Thank you to those writers. I hope to see those of you who can make it September 21st in Austin when John and I will be performing and and meeting each other for the first time, as well as in Denver on September 14th, Salt Lake City on the 16th, Boise, Idaho on the 25th at the Tree Fort Fest and Yoga Fort, and then more to come as the months go on. So thanks for joining our newsletter, and uh, that's the best way to stay in the know about uh, future events in your area and, of course, social media if you can catch things on that kind of, in that sea of information, we, we, we put things there as well. But that's it for this week. We'll get back to the conversations next week is the plan. I'll be back up uh, moving north and getting into preparations for these shows. And I look forward to seeing those who can make it to the road. Until then, you guys keep walking your walk. Don't take any shit. But if you do, do it with grace. You love a leaf. You love a flower. You love a cat. You love a human. But go deeper and deeper into that love. Do you love that which is the source of the light behind all of it? Behind all of it. You don't worship the gate, you go into the inner temple.